the, I think the rule was brought in not for those sort of occasions. I think um, you know when you when you have a throw in and you you make a mistake from a throw in, it's retaken. But unless they change the law uh, for the right reasons, then to the letter of the law, the referee is right. Would you like to see that law changed? It's a difficult one because, as you say, it's. Uh, I think if we change it, and we change it at the beginning of the season, everyone knows. But again, you're in, you're in, you're in the referee's interpretation then of does he slip, um, etc. Um, Chelsea won the title since, since we last saw you. Um, does it feel a bit strange having seen your title handed on to the next people? No, I've been in football long enough to know that every season's different. Uh, every game can be different. Um, I'd like to congratulate them on a well-deserved win. Um, they've been terrific this season, been consistent, and usually, as we were, the Premier League winners are the most consistent team in the league, uh, and they have been. Um, we spoke to Riyad Mahrez last weekend at the game, and he, he said that at first he wanted to leave last summer um, when he the big clubs were after him, and he's also said to us that he wants to play again in the Champions League. Is that a bit of a worry for you hearing those words? It, it sounded almost like a Come and get me, please, no, I don't think so. I think sometimes you ask the players questions and they try and give you an honest answer. I think it can be interpreted in different ways. I think there's nothing wrong with ambition, and whether it be from a player or a manager or a coach. And I think um, him saying he wants to play Champions League, if you remember, I said after being knocked out at Atletico, we want to uh, experience this again. And I don't see any problem with that. Um, Kasper Schmeichel won Players' Player of the Year, Supporters' Player of the Year at the awards dinner the other night. Um, a lot of interest, obviously, in him with his level of performances. He keeps getting the accolades. Is, is, is it going to be difficult to keep him in the face of that? Do you think? I think he uh, he won the awards because of his consistency. Um, Kasper's a type of person. He has a real strong winning mentality, very strong. It comes across in five sides in everything he does, and. Um, He'll always have that. I think his performances this season, as you say, has highlighted um, that he's one of the best goalkeepers out there. I think for us, uh, we're happy with him. He's happy with us. Uh, he's, we've had no offers for him. Um, so that's how I see it with him. Is it key to you that the players want to play here? If one of them, if one of the big names, be it Casper or Mahrez, whoever came to you and said they wanted to leave and not the team in for them, would that change your view? Would, would you let them go in those circumstances? I'd, I'd like to understand why they want to leave and I think you have to uh, talk to the players but until you get an offer there's no there's no need to have that conversation other than to make sure that they're okay to make sure that um, they feel wanted I've said that before but it's important that um, you know you keep your best players at the club um, the vice chairman and John Brookin were both at the awards did, did you uh, have a chat with them any, any movement on the contract any 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 talk of that at all this is the sixth week, I think, you've asked, and hopefully it will come to a conclusion soon because, um, you say, it's um, to a certain extent, yeah, but it doesn't stop you, and it never will. Uh, I understand that, and, um, you know, we've got two games left now. Uh, it will come to a conclusion. I think the club realise, uh, in terms of forward planning, it's important that everybody knows, and so, you know, my answer is we won't have to wait long. Um, Spurs are guaranteed second. Um, what about the job that Pochettino's done? I've seen some pundits suggesting that they choked this year, they choked last year. That's a little bit belittling what they've achieved, isn't it? I think very belittling. Um, they're a team that I like to watch as a coach, as a football person. I think they're very, very pleasing on the eye. Um, I think the job he's done um, in bringing them forward is very, very good. Him and his staff, uh, very approachable every time that you speak to them. Um, and as I say, I think they're very, very good team to watch. Um, is there any? Is that working? You've turned yourself off, didn't you? I'm sorry. Who's charged at nine? Touche. You got me there. But it, go, it did that a minute ago, and then went off. Anyway, sorry. <coughs> um, team news. How's how's Wes Morgan? Yeah, unfortunately, we've picked up. Well, we've still got a few injuries. Wes won't be OK. Uh, Robert Tooth won't be OK. He'll be out. Danny Drinkwater, Papi Mendy, and now Andy King joins the long list. So um, we won't be doing a lot of training uh, the next few days, and we're making sure that we uh, do enough.
to be competitive in these games. We've got two home games, but unfortunately the injuries have caught up with us. Um, yes, two games left and other people will get their opportunity. Two games in four days for you, though, with those injuries. Does that make it difficult? Are you going to have to juggle things around a little bit? Possibly. Does it make it difficult? I think with two games, the players can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I've said before about their attitude and professionalism. And I expect us um, to have a real good go, to finish as high as I can, as we can. Because I've said all along that um, the finishing strongly and the momentum is, is definitely important. Um, the players, the club, the fans want to see uh, two good home performances. Two games to go. You could finish as high as 8th or as low as 16th. That shows how tight it is. That's a heck of a difference, isn't it? Yeah, it has been tight down there for a while now and we realise that. And as you say, um, three points on Thursday makes you 8th. But with the two games, you can finish as low as 16th. We're aware of that, but we have to make sure that, um, first of all, um, we go into Spurs and the total focus is on that. Any animosity between the Leicester players and Spurs players? No. Seemed as though there was last year, maybe there's some stuff going on on, in, on Twitter between the two. I think friendly banter, they call it, don't they? So um, I think players, and when they know each other as well, um, when you're talking about Jamie and Harry, they, they know each other from the England camp and um, it's a bit of friendly banter. Come on, thank you. How did you think that Christian Fuchs did at centre-half on Saturday? I thought he did very well. I thought... Um, the idea of even playing there was um, to use his experience to give us that balance as a left sider. Um, I thought the team first 30 minutes we struggled really to to get hold of Man City, and we have to give them a credit for the way that they played, uh, their movement and the timing of movement was excellent. Very very good offensively, but I thought Christian grew into the game as we did as a team. Um, the owners have taken over a club in Belgium this last. Uh, 24 hours or so. Will that have any impact on you? Any any discussions about that? No, I've had no discussions, and uh, and I think what I what I know about the owners uh, and the King Power, um, it won't stop their commitment towards Leicester City. Give you a chance to feed some of your players it's over there. Oh, okay. All oh, right. That's fine. Can I just ask you a bit more about Tottenham? I mean, it's probably stating the obvious where some of their threats lie, but can you spell it out for us, please, Craig? I think offensively, again, they're a bit similar to Man City and um, having worked with Harry and Deli, I, I know the quality that they've got. But I think as a team, um, they've progressed. Um, they're very um, good, both with and without the ball. Um, they finished second in the league so and they've run Chelsea at full tilt for the title. Um, but we also know our threats, and I've said to you before, we also have to be aware of what we're about. We've got a great record here at the King Power. Um, I think it, although people have said we're safe, Tottenham can't finish any more than second, I think when you, when you come up against a team of Tottenham's quality and our desire to win a game, it should be in for an interesting game. Thank you very much, Craig. Thank you. Hi Craig, hope you're well. Um, Hi Jason. Some clarification on Wes Morgan, Robert Huth, Andy King, is that them out for the season now? No, I, I think I've made a mistake in the past really, to be honest, when I've said about Wes being out for the season or, or vice versa. I think we have to uh, judge everyone on its own merits. I think um, with Robert, he has a chance for the last game, as does Andy King. I don't want to put a time limit on Wes because maybe I've put him under a bit of pressure myself to be fit. Um, I'd leave that to the medical department. He hasn't sort of progressed as well as we all thought he would, but knowing the character in, in Wes Morgan, uh, when he's when he's ready, he'll want to play. What about Mark Albright and sporting that great big shiner on his uh, face on Monday? How's he? Is he all right? He's fine. He trained fully uh, from that. Um, you could see from his reaction, but we had a chat after the game. I've said that, and I think um, there was no animosity towards Man City. Um, yes, the elbow was raised, but it wasn't intentional. Um, Mark's a very competitive player, but um, you know we're glad to have him back on the training pitch. And just on Robert Huth, we saw he was in the away end at the Etihad at the weekend. Now we've seen it a couple of times. I think Slimani and a couple of the players were at Millwall in the FA Cup there. I think Danny Drinkwater at Everton at Goodison last season. Is that something the club encouraged the players to do? Is it something to do off their own back? 
I think it's more what they do off their own back, really. I think they have the whenever they don't play, I'll encourage them to come and watch and to become a part of the team, come in the dressing room. I think Robert had his little children with him, if I'm honest, and uh, he didn't want to run the run the risk of running them in the changing room, not be able to get them out. So I think it was pre-planned for him to be in there. One or two selfies with fans. He never seems to smile. Does he? Does he have a smile for photographs? He does smile, not very often, <laughs> but he, he does smile. Um, one or two other things. I mean, Rob's mentioned the vice chairman. His message on Monday. I mean, talking about the past and the future. Um, seems to still uh, King Power and, uh, and the owners still want to invest in this club. How, how pleasing is that from a management point of view? Yeah, I was very pleased and um, as you say, Top's message on Monday, um, I, I, it felt sincere, it felt from the heart and I think that came across as it always has done with him. Um, it's very encouraging as it is for management and players but also just as important for supporters as well. Uh, it shows that they have the commitment still there for, for Leicester. Do they get enough credit from the wider media, the fans, for what the job that they've done here? I think because they, they're more of a low profile, um, I think that's natural. But, um, you know, they do get credit down at the training ground where it's due. You mentioned the recruitment meeting last week. Of course, we're not expecting the ins and the outs of it, but did it go well? Yes, it did. Um, a sharing of views and ideas of players. Um, and it was good to, to hear other people's thoughts and how far down the line we are with it. So, yeah, it was a very productive meeting. One or two other things. I mean, end of the season, we often talk about out-of-contract players. I don't think there's that many here at the King Power. Marcin Vasilevsky's won. What's the situation with him? Do we expect him to leave, stay? Um, until the club have sat down with Marcin, it would be wrong of me to, to do that. I think um, we're all aware of Marcin's contribution, um, become a bit of a cult figure, but I think the... The club need to sit down with Marcin first before we talk to anybody else. Does he ever smile for photographs? I'll tell him you told him <laughs> that. Um, again, Rob mentioned about Kasper Schmeichel, Riyad Mahrez, uh, speculation in the newspapers. Have, have any players expressed a desire to leave, though, this summer? Has anybody come up to you and said... No, and, and you've just said the word speculation, and I think that's what it is. It always will be. I think I'm not sure... I don't think we're the only club that have that. A lot of other clubs do. It's something in the modern game you have to deal with. But like I've said before, no player has expressed any desire to leave this football club to me or to the owners. A couple of players that were mentioned last week, I know you can't play them because of the, the rules, FIFA rules, Matty James, Harvey Barnes. Just on Harvey Barnes, he's been called up to the England under-20 squad recently, I think yesterday for the Toulon tournament. How big a future has he got in football? Um, without putting too much pressure on him, I've seen a, a real resurgence in his um, ability and demeanour since he's come back from MK Dons. And by that, I mean, it's really benefited him. Um, it would be a great um, rule if once their season's finished and there's no impact, he c he's still our player, that we could have included him in our games. We can't. It's great recognition for him and the club that he's got the call up for England. Um, the future, who knows, I think he's got a very good head. We had a great conversation, myself and him yesterday, where we were talking about his best position, uh, where I see him playing, how he's going to come back, where he needs to improve, where he sees his weaknesses. Um, and speaking to him yesterday, I've, I've felt a real hunger and desire to succeed at this football club, which is really pleasing to know, but also challenging for him because he needs to take places of decent players already. Yeah, Matty James as well. I mean, he's had a, a heck of a last two years with his injury, of course, going on, on loan to Barnsley this season. Do you see him, assuming that you're still at the club uh, and part of things next season, do you see him challenging for a first-team place once again here in the Premier League? I think Matty's proven. Um, the one doubt about Matty was his durability to train and play. Having spoken to the Barnsley staff, he never missed a day's training. I think it was the ideal opportunity for him to get games. Now he wants to cement a place in our first team. Uh, I'm sure he'll be given every opportunity because we all know what a quality player he is. It, I think the question mark over Matty was his fitness, which now he's got that durability in him, um, that robustness, if you want, to train, to play. Um, he's come back and I can see in his mentality he's really pleased with how it's gone. Just finally from me, I think Rob mentioned that you can finish as high as eighth. 
or as low as 16th, does, does prize money come into it when, you, when you're thinking about us finishing as high as possible? Because there's a lot of difference between those places, 8th and 16th, when you know the amount of money you can get at the end of the season. I think for us it's about trying to get the three points. The prize money will take care of itself, but you know we want. To, I've said on many occasions we want to try and finish as high as possible. The highest we can finish is 8th. Let's try that. Good luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anything else for today before we go into the Embargo section now? Okay, so anything from now?